This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I'm the president of World Ministries International, as well as Eagles Saving Nations. My website is worldministries.org. That's worldministries.org. Check it out. See what Eagle Saving Nations is all about. Uh, you know this world is in crisis. America's in crisis. Uh, we're experiencing a communist coup in progress. Uh, our nation has become evil. Our government has become evil. In the past, we've won war after war because we had Judeo-Christian values. We came against evil around the world, and we prevailed. But when we become evil, we are in for judgment unless the church can stop this insanity. And that's the whole point of Eagle Saving Nations. We've got to get into the stadiums. Pentecost has to come back down. And we've got to go forth without fear and intimidation with, with the boldness of God that Peter experienced once he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Truth takes away deception. Prayer brings conviction. We have got to go forth and speak the truth and stop the lies of the enemy that's trying to destroy America, move us into a new world order where Christians will be severely persecuted. Once again, in the studio today, I have a prophetic woman of God, Sydney Hemingmore. Uh, we have a long relationship. God has spared her life a multitude of times. I've interviewed her different times on this program. And uh, God sent me again uh, when I was starting a 20-state trip uh, this summer. And my wife and I felt impressed to contact her. We met with her. and. Uh, God spoke to her again, and <laughs> I'll let her tell you that story, but uh, then after we left, uh, we went ministering through the States, and she went on to uh, Sweden, but uh, Sydney, welcome back to the Warning Program. Thank you, Jonathan. You know, when you gave your introduction that a second Pentecost that we needed, yes. well, the verse came to me, with God, all things are possible. And Jonathan, I have faith in my heart that God can do that. And I pray he has mercy on America. And I pray he gives us our second Pentecost, that he forgive our sins and bring us back to him. Amen. Amen, Sydney. Now, uh, I know that God has spared your life different times in the past from a multitude of calamities heart, cancer, so many things. And uh, we've done yes. programs on that. But yes. I, I know that uh, God led us to have you our first stop. You were my first yes. official stop on yes. this mission trip. And yes. I, I remember once again, uh, praying over you, Sydney. Well, the scriptures say that receive a prophet and you'll receive the prophet's reward. So, I received you and your son, little Jedediah, Michael Jonathan <laughs> Jedediah, handsome. he's so cute, and your beautiful young wife, Jonathan. And I received a reward beyond my wildest imagination. Now, what, what my, I'm 70 years young. Okay. okay. Jesus saves the best wine to last. Okay? Oh, wow. Yeah, and look at Sarah. Look at she did her greatest work as a, a senior lady. So, so we can't expect our best years up ahead. Now, I had pretty much lost hope, Jonathan. You know, you asked how I was doing uh, before Jesus healed me this last time, and I said, Jonathan, you know, I can barely get through the day. I'm just waiting for Jesus to come. Yes. And, and I, I didn't tell anybody, but I was wondering, you know, if I'd been dying because I was in a very slow decline for a, for practically an entire year. Wow. And my body, yeah, my body was racked with pain and everything was almost impossible. So God gives me the strength to meet you and your family in Post Falls. And I'm there explaining to you this you know, this horrible health problem that I'm suffering from. And all of a sudden, you, you took your wife's hand, you took my hand, little Jedediah, and you rebuked the spirit of death off of me. And I thought, oh my God, wow, that's it. 
And, and here it is several months later, and Jesus has returned me to full functioning and my body is not in tormenting pain. Jesus healed me once again. Amen. And it reminds, yeah, reminds me of a couple of verses. You know, Jesus says, uh, all you who are weary and heavy laden, you know, come to me, Jesus, and I will give you rest and take his yoke. And then another thing he said is my peace I leave with you. I don't give you this peace, you know, like in this world. No, his peace he leaves with us. And, and I feel that, that Jesus has given me that peace. He's given me that rest. He's given me the best wine. And I want to pray for our viewer, too. I want them to get healing like Jesus gave me, Jonathan. Amen. Amen. Do well, you feel moved by the Holy Spirit to pray for the viewer? Or should okay. I pray? I want you to pray. And uh, Sydney, God has certainly okay. renewed your strength. And uh, you're mounting up with wings of eagles once again. And uh, you said you're 70 years young. And uh, I'll tell you what, if people didn't, if you didn't say that, people might think you're only 45 or 50. <laughs> well, well, the camera makeup and hair makeup and wardrobe and lighting helps. <laughs> well, I, I believe so does the spirit of God in you. You know, it does. In fact, Peter said something to that in the scriptures that that the uh, the holy women of old, they their beauty was basically come from the inside you know jesus the relationship with jesus is their beauty and so so i'll pray for our viewers okay so you know if you're yeah if you're feeling like you know you don't feel good or you're feeling old or not well or something well good news jesus restored this grandma he can restore you too no matter what age you are so don't Amen. fret don't worry just receive the healing, the healing power of Jesus. So, so let's pray now. Okay, Jesus, you know the viewer, you know the situation they're in, you know their health condition. And we want them to be restored, revived, and strengthened by your power and have a call of God on your life. In the name of Jesus, you have a call of God on your life. You're listening here. This is the Holy Spirit here. So we pray for your call on your life, your new, your youth being renewed like the eagles, and Jesus give you the desires of your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, that was good. That was good, Sydney. And I want you now, I know that uh, God was going to restore you because you had a mission to do in uh, Sweden. So I know you were going to visit I, your daughter. And, my daughter. Uh, and I'm my... sure God used you be, you know, over there because God will use us wherever we're willing to be used, wherever we go. And so uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about your experiences in Sweden? Well, um, of course, I was able to give my testimony how Jesus healed me of terminal cancer when my daughter was a little girl. Amen. Yeah. And so... I always try to do that. I always try to be faithful. You know, Jesus said that we are his witnesses. So so that's basically our job is just tell what Jesus has done for us. And that's just every one of us, our job is just be faithful, just to tell about Jesus, you know, to the grandkids, to everybody that we can, the grocery clerks. You know, now, I think that that's a good point you just made is, when God has done something for us, we should continue to give him glory. You know, terminal cancer is no joke. And, and so even though now it, it's been some time ago, it's no joke. And other people are fighting it. And for you to continue to give that testimony encourages them. I mean, uh, I believe already it's encouraged this audience today. So that you know, people are fighting for their lives, whether it's cancer or something else. But God delivered you. He healed you. And uh, I'm glad you said that you gave your testimony because that is critical. I don't know if you want to, in just a, a few words, give your testimony here for people that haven't watched our programs in the past. And, and I, But I mean, I believe we should continually give God praise 
for what he's done. Absolutely. In Revelation, it says the saints overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and that we don't even love our own little lives. No, the word of our testimony is more powerful than our own little lives. So that's why we exist is to testify of Jesus once we are his follower or his believer. No, that's good. That's good. We exist to give him testimony. Yes, exactly. That's it. All things what are made for him and by him. And so we are made for him and we exist through him. In him, we live and move and have our being, our existence. So uh, I was about 36 or 37 or so. My body had seriously weak, become weak over about a period of a decade. Of course, I didn't understand why. Um, And uh, so one evening uh, when I was nursing my little baby, I discovered a huge like rock, a huge lump in my breast. Wow. And I knew immediately I was dying of terminal cancer. I knew that because I could feel it. Then um, I, so I, I, I was an atheist at the time, terrified of death. So I asked Jesus to get me to heaven and, you know, give my babies, my husband a long life and then meet me, you know, so they could meet me in heaven someday. Jesus immediately took all fear of death off of me. So I wasn't afraid anymore. And then, uh, so I endured one horrifying year of chemotherapy. Wow. My little, yeah, my little boy was about one and a half to two and a half during this time period. And he says, mom, the doctors are killing you. They're killing you. Don't go to the doctors. And I says, oh no, Dana, they're helping your mom. Well, no, I would go in and have poison literally pumped right into my heart, okay? Literally poisoning. And the poor little baby, you know, little my son, little Dana, he could see it, he could smell it. He knew I was being poisoned to death. Okay, so after enduring that one entire year, and you know, talk about maddening, Jonathan, to actually have to agree to have the poison pumped right in the body. I mean, that is a maddening thing to agree to that because everything in the person and the human being wants to run away from that. So um, the cancer came back in the liver. Uh, I called my mom, told her, you know, that I was dying and she made me call uh, her old old man of God, Reverend uh, Stillwell, uh, a retired Methodist minister who who started operating under the charismatic gifts and the charismatic renewal in the 60s in Southern California. So he prayed and and I was kind of like this. And he said, Jesus says he's going to heal you. And boom, right here, Jesus touched me. Now, I didn't see Jesus, but I experienced right here a warm wave go through me. And I I was kind of like this, and I went like this, and I felt cancer blow out of my feet. And it reminded me of that man in the Bible who had leprosy, you know, that says, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus touched him and says, I'm willing to be clean. And boom, all of that man's leprosy was gone. And that's what happened to me. Jesus touched me and boom, all cancer was gone. Wow. Wow. The, uh, what, what is your feelings now on, on chemo? I I heard you say, you know, that, uh, you must be not thinking to let them poison you with chemo. What's your opinion? Well, Jonathan, after Jesus healed me, I wanted to know the truth about everything, everything, God, Jesus, chemotherapy, health, existence. So I started reading the Bible. The first time I read it through was one question. Is chemotherapy a way that God heals? Well, I got to be honest with you, okay? There were three places in the Bible that resembled chemo. Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I was thinking, 
kill, steal, and destroy. Isn't that what chemo did? It, it, it killed my immune system. It killed the fast-growing cells. It stole my will to live. It destroyed my immune system. Well, there's your answer right there. Okay, real simple. And then Jesus said, but I, Jesus, have come to bring life and life more abundantly. So that's the most obvious answer from my personal experience. Now, what the doctors had wanted to do, they had wanted to get the, um, even after the cancer came back at that year, they had wanted to high dose me with more chemo, even though one oncologist says, no, we gave you the full dose of the 5-FU and the red devil and the, I think it was cytoxin. It's not going to work. No, we gave you the full dose that you could ever take for a lifetime, you know, which, which they had. But one uh, other oncologist says, oh, no, even though it's in the liver, I would recommend more chemo. Even though the cancer is in the liver, I'd recommend more chemo. And that, of course, is before Jesus touched me. And by the way, the doctors would not believe that the biopsy came back normal. They made me get two biopsies to prove that the cancer had disappeared. It was gone. Okay, so that's the first thing about chemo. Now, there's two, three more points I want to make about it. The second point is, is I had just read what happened to King David. You know, King David, he, he did something really bad. And, you know, his general said, don't do it, don't do it. But David did it anyway. He numbered the, the fighting men. You know, he numbered the tribes of Israel. In, yes. other words, in other words, he did a census. So he was kind of declaring in his heart, oh, my men are our strength. In other words, not God is our strength. No, the men are the strength. So he did something bad. So the prophet came to him and said, look, you got to pay for this. You know, you are going to have to pay for this. And this is what David, and David said. He said, okay, let me fall into the hands of God because God is merciful. But let me not fall into the hands of man. So that was the reason I didn't take the second dose of chemo because first of all, I couldn't tolerate it and I knew it brought death. But second of all, I went like King Dave did that God is merciful, but not into the hands of man. Now there's two more places that talk about chemo and, and it gets pretty ugly, okay? Um, I think it's the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> he's, he's the, there's the beautiful young ladies that Isaiah is talking about. And, and when judgment comes, they get stink instead of, you know, smelling the beauty of youth, okay? They get baldness instead of having the beauty of hair, okay? Yes. Uh, what does chemo do? Chemo gives baldness and it gives stink. So, so there's the second thing, okay? So the first point was chemo, it kills, still, and destroys Satan. Second thing is chemo, um, a, a description when somebody's under judgment or when a people are under judgment. You know, they get bald and stinky and all this horrible stuff, weak. Okay, then the third thing. In Revelation, it says the people are deceived by the, and the Greek word is pharmakia. Now that would be pharmaceuticals or sorcery, but uh, pharmaceuticals, pharmakia. And it says the people would not repent. So in Revelation, at the end of the age, the pharmacy, the pharmaceutical industry will be big and it'll deceive people. And, you know, mystery Babylon, you know, when it goes down, and one of the reasons is because of the pharmaceuticals or the pharmakia. So those are the, the three places in scripture that, that I found that you know, from my personal experience, Jonathan. Now, I did get the absolute highest dose they could give to anybody. So, you know, I have a very negative experience. And then also, I'm sorry to have to say this, but everybody who I know who's taken chemo, they're dead. They're dead. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we have a God that's not afraid of chemo. And... Uh, 
a God that can heal like you were healed then. You didn't go through another round when yeah. that man wanted to. And uh, so we have a God that believes in miracles. We are a miracle. We serve a miracle working God. And so I would think that this testimony is meant for people right now. I know <coughs> we were going in another direction, but we'll continue with that um, later. But right now, I want you to pray for people out there. One that are suffering cancer, uh, terminal cancer. Pray for people that have had chemo, that God will restore their immune system. And so let's just go into a, a time of, of prayer right now, uh, believing that this program was a ordained by God. I Like I said, I wanted to talk about Sweden. We'll do it another day. But right now you start to pray over people that have had a, a diagnosis of a terminal illness, people that have taken chemo, that God will renew their immune system, uh, people that have just been had the diagnosis and uh, they're wondering what to do. Well, God can heal them. So uh, Sydney, pray. And I think the way that you prayed for me, you rebuked the spirit of death off that's of me. Right. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's what I want to do now. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit of death off of the viewer right now in the name of Jesus. Okay, it's gone. That spirit of death is gone. You don't have to be afraid. You can live. And Lord Jesus, I ask that you heal the hearts, heal all the heart muscles, heal all the immune systems. Give them strength, give them hope, health, and healing. And Jesus, uh, any sins that the people uh, may have done, um, you know, we all make mistakes. We all do things wrong and, and maybe even contribute to our own, you know, illness. Lord, any of the mistakes, forgiven. They are forgiven right now. So any heavy load is lifted off of the people right now in the name of Jesus the sins are forgiven. The mistakes are forgiven. And right now we decree health into the person in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now there's uh, two things um, I want to say. One is if you are laying in bed and can't get out of bed, go to the couch. Okay. At least get up and go to the couch. So you don't have to be bedridden anymore. <laughs> Just get out of bed and go to the couch. Okay, and then here's the other thing. Um, Jesus, I guess, and, and Peter and Paul, for that matter, told people, get up and walk. Okay, so if you're having a hard time even getting up out of the chair, regardless, get up and walk, even if it's three steps. And keep walking, whether it's five steps, 10 steps. So get up and walk in the physical realm and get out of bed. You know, Jesus, when he, he was at, uh, at the pool there, let's see, the pool of Bethesda, he said to that man who, who was, was laying on his mat, who couldn't even walk, he says, okay, you know, get up and take your mat. Okay. And I think he said, and walk. So... So there's the, there's the work in the physical realm. The work in the physical realm is get out of bed and walk, okay? And that's one of the things that I had to do. When, when I had that cancer, instead of laying in bed, and even after, you know, afterwards, I would come out to the couch, okay? I would come out and at least sit or lay on the couch. So get out of bed. In other words, take up your mat and walk, even if it's just walking to, you know, the bathroom or the kitchen or to the front door. So there's your prescription. Get up, take up your bed, get out of bed and do walk. And then faith, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up in the book of James. And if they've committed sins, you know, in other words, wow, what, what did I do to, 
to help, you know, to hurt my health kind of a thing. Yeah, we all do. We all do. We all make mistakes. They will be forgiven. And that's what the book of James said. The book of James says, if you're sick, call for the elders. Well, here we are. I guess, I guess we're getting more in the elder years, <laughs> Jonathan. Call for the elders and the elders will pray for you. So that's what we're doing now, praying for you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. Well, uh, in this sense, at this point, the oil is the symbol of the oil of the Holy Spirit. So we believe the Holy Spirit is here and we believe that the words we speak are words of spirit and life and that the Holy Spirit is coming into you for healing now. Amen. And I'm so grateful. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. I'm so grateful that you're here with us and getting hope right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, again, Sydney rebuked the, the spirit of death. Now you must you must agree with that. You must believe in that. Again, faith is just acting on God's word. We don't give any room for the enemy. The battle's in the mind. We don't allow the enemy to create any doubt and unbelief like Adam and Eve doubted the word of God in the garden. They went into sin. We're not going to allow that. Uh, she rebuked the spirit of death and life is coming. Uh, renew that immune system in Jesus' name. Let that immune system be strong. And once again, as she rebuked the spirit of death, Death come out of people in Jesus' name. Uh, cancer come out by the roots. Let these people be healed. Let them have a testimony like Sydney. Let them call in 360-629-5248. 360-629-5248. And like Sydney said, we've all made mistakes. We need to eat right. We need to drink right. We got to cut out the sugars, uh, the bad carbohydrates. Again, we need to understand these things. I mean fruits and salads and uh, vegetables. We need to eat right. Uh, you know, uh, civilization food is what they call it has destroyed mankind. And so we've got to eat properly too. We got to take care of our bodies. 360-629-5248. I have different books on health. If you want to order them, just call my office. 360-629-5248. 360-629-5248. And we've got many books we can recommend you. And uh, Sydney, I'll tell you what, I know people right now were touched because this program was certainly led by the Holy Spirit. We went a different direction than what we were going to do. And so that means somebody out there needed it. Yay, praise so God. I can't wait praise for God. them to call in and give their testimony. Yes. And oh, so that they, is one. Yeah, that is one thing. When a person's been healed, tell. Give your testimony. Call, call in and give your and testimony. Tell. Amen. <laughs> Let us know that the, when, when we did this program today, Sydney and I, you were healed. Once again, 360-629-5248, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Uh, if you're concerned over this situation in Israel, I need to go there and help the people of Israel rebuild their lives you can send a special donation. God bless you. Tune in tomorrow as I continue with Sydney Hemingmore. And this time we talk on Sweden. God bless you. <laughs>